Storyblocks Audio. You cannot be living anyhow, and you believe that one day you will die, and then all the bishops in the earth will gather and then conduct a mass for you, do sacrifice for you, pray you into the kingdom of God. That is a philosophy from the pit of hell. How you live here on earth will tell you where you will end in eternity. Audio. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, to the eternal ages, Mary spreads His reign. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. of God, my Savior, standing, oh, standing, I am standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that are not fair, when the holy storms of doubt and fear by the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, oh standing Standing on the promises of God My Savior Standing, oh standing Last I am standing the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fail Listening every moment to the Spirit's God Resting in the Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, oh standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, oh standing, I am standing on the promises of God. Standing, oh standing. of God, my Savior, standing, oh standing, I am standing on the promises of God, glory to Jesus, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, to behold wondrous things from the scriptures today have your way as you speak to our souls that our souls may hear and live in jesus name we pray amen welcome on board i'm trusting god that he will bless us today as we turn to the book of Acts of the apostles chapter 3 chapter 3 from verse 1 to 10 as chapter 3 1 to 10 now Peter and John were going out to the temple at the hour of prayer, the night hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they led daily at the gate of the temple, that is called Beautiful Gate, to ask alms for those entering the temple. Wow. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple he asked to receive arms verse 4 and peter directed his gaze at him as did john and said look at us mm. and he 
he feeds his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Verse 6. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and enter the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Verse 10, and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. People who saw you today will see you tomorrow and they'll be filled with wonder and amazement of what God has done in your life in Jesus' name. Ebu Bele. Wow. Today I'm speaking on Beyond the Beautiful Gates. Beyond the Beautiful Gates. Beyond the Beautiful Gates. <clears throat> the Bible said now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer which was the ninth hour. If you have followed me, I have always said that the hour of prayer is the hour of power. Ebubele. The hour of prayer is the hour of power. It's the hour of power encounter. And at the gate, beautiful gate, the gate of the temple, they met a man who was crippled and was being carried out to that gate on daily basis so he can beg for arms. The Bible says one day. Let me begin with one day. Number one, one day. Hmm. First, well, I have said number one already. The hour of prayer is the hour of power. It's the hour of power encounter. And then number two, I look at one day. One day, the Bible said, one day. Hmm. This man had been at this gate all the time. That was not the first time Peter and John were going to the house of God for prayers. No. They had been going. They had been meeting this man at the beautiful gate because the Bible said he was being carried to that place on a daily basis. So it wasn't the first day they met him. But one day, a particular day came when Peter and John were provoked in their spirit to do something. Can I tell you something? There is always a one day in somebody's life. There is always a one day in somebody's life. Hmm. My father, my father. Dabarado Shikadiya. This man had been there all the time, seeing Peter, probably. It is even possible they may have given him money before. But this time around, they said, silver and gold we have none. But we are going to give you something more than silver and gold. One day, one day, hey, one day. I am praying for everyone watching me right now everyone under the sound of my voice in the name of jesus that your one day has finally come today 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 may that your one day come today may that your one day materialize today in the name of jesus christ hmm. one day there was an encounter you have been in that problem for a long time but i tell you that that appointed day is about to jam you mm. the bible said it is time to favor zion so there is is there not a time an appointed time for a man on earth there is always a time and when your time comes, you cannot be turned down. 
When your turn comes, you cannot be turned down, either by God or by man. One day, one day, I don't know who is watching me. What day, which day is that day when your turnaround will come? One day, one day. May that day materialize today in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter and John, we are going to the house of God in the hour of prayer. So that brings me to number three. Peter and John, they were friends, very close friends, going to the house of God during the hour of prayer. So they were prayer partners. And I want to ask you something. Who are your friends? Who are your friends? Whom your friend is matters a lot. Because there are a number of things that can happen in your life concerning your friend. Number one, they can add to your life. Number two, they can subtract from your life. Number three, they can multiply your life. Number four, they can dry up completely what is in you. There are certain people you meet, your ship will begin to sink. Jonah in the ship headed for Tashis, nearly somersaulted until they threw him out of the ship. Abraham never saw until Lot departed from his life, God now said to him, Look, anywhere your eyes will get to, I will give to you. There are certain people you need to terminate from your life, separate from your life, so that you can move forward in life. And I pray that anybody that is not adding to your life, God is going to divinely bring a separation between you and that person. I decree that those that will add to your life will show up in your life in the name of Jesus. Number four, the Bible said there was a crippled man. This man was crippled from birth. So it was not his fault. He just came into life and discovered that he was crippled. There was nothing he could do about it i look at it as foundational problem he just saw himself that way i don't know the situation you have found yourself just came into the world and discovered that perhaps your family has a bad name perhaps nobody marries early in your family perhaps poverty is ravaging your family perhaps people die prematurely in your family Perhaps no good thing remains in the hand of anybody in your family. You just came into the world and discovered that that is the situation in your life. I want to tell you that that is not the end of the road for you. God can still turn it around. <clears throat> God can change something that somebody carried into this world, God can turn it around. He can. He, 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 he is an expert in turning around the background of people. That's why when I was speaking the other time, I said, do not allow your background to keep your back on the ground. Do not allow your background to keep your back on the ground. That you came into the world and saw yourself in that predicament does not mean you will remain like that forever. It depends on what you do with that predicament. He was crippled from birth. But he became somebody jumping up and down in the temple. Number five, the Bible said this man was being carried to the gate on daily basis. That's what I, I call routine life. You know, his routine was in the morning, some people will be so kind enough to carry him to the gate where he will beg for arms and in the evening they will come and help him back to the house. And that was the way his life was going. A cyclical life. You know, there are people who are living that kind of life, living from hand to mouth. There are people, you know, 
before the salary comes, they will buy things on credit, you know, finally get their salary, pay those that they bought things from on credit, and start again to buy on credit. And that's how their lives have been going. Cyclical life. This man was being carried out on daily basis. I don't know that cyclical life, that routine life that is not conducive. You have found yourself in, in the name of Jesus. Today, I command it to be terminated. Let it be terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at it again. This man was being carried every day. So the man didn't have the capacity to carry himself. He was being carried every day. I don't know who has been carrying your life. You know, you cannot pay your house rent except somebody helps you to do so. School fees cannot be paid if somebody has not sent money. You cannot feed without somebody helping you. You cannot clothe yourself or your children without somebody helping you you know it looks like you cannot help yourself you are totally dependent upon people dependent upon uncle dependent on friends dependent on brothers and sisters and that has made you to lose worth you don't have worth in life because they just carry you and wherever they like they dump you I decree that from today you will begin to carry everything that has been carrying you before in the name of Jesus Christ today God will give you capacity to be on your feet and then carry those people that have been carrying you before this man number six was kept at the <clears throat> beautiful gate beautiful gate and I ask one million dollar question. How beautiful was a beautiful gate that harbors beggars, crippled people, blind people. How beautiful was the gate? Look at it this way. Some people answer certain things by mouth, yet their life is the opposite of it. For instance, Somebody's name is joy, but the person is full of sorrow. Somebody's name is patience, but the person is full of impatience. Somebody's name is chidema, and yet there is nothing that shows that God is good in the life of that person. Somebody is favor, wow, whereas the person should rather be called disappointment because there is no iota of favor. In the person's life i know somebody whose name is prosperity if i prosper that's what he answers prosper but he is a complete definition of poverty there's nothing that shows prosperity in his life beautiful gate kept at the beautiful gate and yet that place is full of ugly things beggars so how beautiful was the beautiful gate what an irony i decree that everything that is going the negative way in your life <clears throat> everything that is not working out in your life everything that is negative in the name of jesus i command it to turn around to positivity in the name of jesus i decree that from today prosperity shall be seen in your life i decree that from today favor shall be seen in your life i decree that from today the goodness of the lord shall be witnessed in your life i decree that from today you will truly be patient that from today joy will become your portion instead of sorrow i decree that from today you will truly be beautiful when they say beautiful then it is true that you are beautiful not the opposite being seen in your life hey that is an error every error in your life beautiful and yet nothing is beautiful in the name of jesus i terminate it you are a beautiful lady 
but no man comes your way no man looks your way that's an error in the name of jesus i rebuke it you have beautiful market nobody looks your way are your man a wrong way good market says itself but yet nobody looks your way i decree that from today that error will be corrected in your life in the name of jesus receive favor today receive favor today in the name of jesus christ hmm. again as number seven or eight now that day came the crippled man saw peter and john and he demanded for an arms from them then peter and john say hey all the while been coming here We've been passing, we've been seeing you, but today is different. There was that provocation in their heart. Peter said to the crippled man, Look on us. Look on us. Look on us. And the crippled man looked on them. I have earlier talked about one day. One day. One day. You see, let me tell you something. You may have been going to church. You may have been attending miracle services. You may have been praying, asking God to do something in your life. And each day you go, you return with the same story. I have an advice for you. Please don't give up. Don't give up going. Keep on going. If that miracle doesn't happen today, tomorrow may be that one day. Next week might be that one day. Next month might be that one day. Hannah was going to Shiloh on yearly basis. Until that particular day, one day, Kalamana, T.C. Abahana, he had an encounter with Prophet Eli. And he said, Go home, may the Lord grant you your request. Go home, may the Lord grant you your request. Hmm. I remember one lady who was SS, you know, genotype SS, a secular, as a matter of fact. She's been attending church, attending our programs, faith clinic, cross overnight. It was like after she will go, remaining the same. After nothing will happen. After she will go back for a test and is still, you know, SS. As a matter of fact, most times I would say, go for a test. Person will return and say, still the same. Until one day, one of the programs, bam, the power of God hit her. And then, she went for a test. It was AA. Ebubele. AA. And that day, I spoke to the church. I said, you see, you don't need to give up because you came today. Nothing happened. There is always one day in somebody's life. There is always one day in somebody's life. Don't give up. Continue to seek God. You have attended revival meetings. You have attended annual programs. You have been fasting and praying. And yet nothing has happened. Keep on. Don't give up. Keep on waiting on him. One day. One day that miracle will happen. This man was always seeing these two people. But that day was a special day. Peter said, Look on us. When the man requested for an arms, let me pause here also and say that sometimes or most times many people or many of us don't even know our real need. We don't even know what our problem is. This man was asking for money but Peter said, silver and gold I have none but I have something better than money that I'm going to give to you. Hmm. Compare this man with blind Bartimaeus. He was a beggar. But when he saw Jesus, he didn't ask for money. He just heard Jesus was passing by. He didn't ask for money. He simply shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
Jesus said, bring him. What do you want? He said, that I may see. Amalado see That I may see. When I see, wherever money is, I can fetch the money. And that's why people will always say, teach me how to fish. Instead of giving me money, they don't break their heads to receive a miracle. Expectation is the mother of miracles. Let me share this story with you. Maybe you learn something from it. One of my members believed so much in me and the son was sick and hospitalized. That was Saturday night. I walked into that uh, hospital room. As soon as she lifted up her eyes and saw me walking, she said, hey, thank God we'll be discharged tomorrow. We're living here. It's already night. We'll live here tomorrow. And then that child was so sick, there's nothing that shows that that child can get well that night and, and be discharged tomorrow. But true to her expectation, I spoke a word over that child. My son, I know you prayed for my son, and my son is okay now. I was so embarrassed. So I told mommy, I told your wife to tell you to pray for my son. Well, my wife forgot. She didn't tell me. And I didn't pray, but her expectation that she told me and I prayed, the child was okay. The child recovered. Expectation. Peter said, look on us. Why must he look on them? They are not God. They are not the giver of miracle. But it was an expectation. He said, look on us. We have something to offer you. We are carrier of something, carrier of divine deposit. We are agents of God. We have a deposit in our lives to transfer unto you. Look on us. And when he looked on them, he said, Silver and gold we do not have, but what we have we give unto you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. When they made that statement, the Bible said, stretch forth his right hand, held his right hand, and lifted him up. And as he was lifting him up, suddenly power surged through the legs. The Bible said, the knee, the ankle, they received power, and then stood up. And the young man started walking and started jumping up and down. Somebody shout hallelujah. He stretched forth his hand, held his right hand, and lifted him up. I prophesy to you today, heaven will give you a helping hand. Heaven will give you a helping hand. That business that has fallen, God shall give you a helping hand. That sickness you have found yourself, God shall give you a helping hand. That your academics that is now holding you by the neck, God shall give you a helping hand. You are pregnant and you are afraid that this one will take your head. Behold the helping hand of God coming to you. The psalmist said, I will look up to the hills and unto the mountain. From where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord God Almighty who created the heavens and the earth. That ordeal your family is going through, may God give you a helping hand. That court case you are facing now, may God give you a helping hand. That person that is afflicting your life because he thinks he has all the power and all the money, may God give you a helping hand. In that interview you are going to face, may God give you a helping hand. In that documentation you have been praying for, may God give you a helping hand. In that financial problem you have found yourself, hey, I speak into your life. Look at the helping hand of God coming unto you. There is a man from my place. This man was sick unto death. To cut the long story short, he was a rich man, but you need to be thanking God all the time when you are healthy because... One sickness can make you a poor person, even if you are a billionaire. This man sold everything he had, his property, 
spent all the money he had, became poor. He started going from one native doctor to the other, from one prayer house to the other. Eventually, they carried him back to the village to die. By the grace of God, I met this man. He shared his ordeal with me and we prayed. Suddenly, the power of God hit the man and the man was healed. And this man became completely okay. He organized a Thanksgiving. That Thanksgiving, a lot of people were healed because they knew the man was a write-off. The man was written off. And everybody was saying, if God could heal this man, then he can heal me. It was a healing service. But why I'm telling this story is that this man, now being healed, has lost his business and didn't know what next to do. When he came to me, I said to him, the God who healed you will give you a helping hand. He will bring destiny helpers. You will bounce back to business. A little while, a few persons, a few friends came to him because this man was a very nice man. They said to him, you are very nice unto us when things were okay with you. What can we do to help you bounce back to your business? He made a statement and these friends raised the money for him. And he went back to his business. Today, he's doing very well again. One more time, I speak into your life. I invoke the oil of God upon my head. And I decree that helping hand will come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is not over until God says it is over. He stretched forth his hand and helped him. And Bible says, instantly... He was here. Wow. The man's feet receive strength. You cannot stand before on your own. But God is giving you grace to stand on your own from today. Like I said before, for you to buy a soap, you need the help. Transport, you need help. School fees, you need help. House rent, you need help. Feeding, you need help. From today, God is giving your legs stamina, strength, capacity to stand in the name of Jesus Christ. The ankles became strong. The ankles connect the feet and the other part of the body. Helps you to carry load. The ankle helps your entire you know, to carry the load of your body. Without it, you can't carry your body. So the ankle became strong. I decree over your life that God will give you capacity to carry responsibilities. The level you are now, your responsibilities are weighing you down. Maybe you are the first son or first daughter or the only one that is a bit handy. And every problem is on you and it's weighing you down. I decree that God will strengthen your ankle. You will have the capacity to carry load, no matter what it is. The only question you will ask them, how much is it? Come on, you write a check or you give them the money. God will give you such a capacity. If you are here, your amen three times. God will give you that capacity in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Mm. What a mighty God we serve. Amaram nigeme, nigeme ya kobi de mama. Amaram nigeme, nigeme ya kobi de mama. Amaram nigeme. I 
speak to you by the word of the Lord. You shall stand on your feet again. Hmm. Rejoice not over me, O my enemies. For when I fall, hmm, I shall rise again. The righteous falleth seven times and riseth up again. A living dog is better than a dead lion. You shall stand again on your feet. Mm. You shall stand again upon your feet. Mm. This man jumped up on his feet. He was not only standing, but he was jumping up and down. Not just that he jumped. That's why my topic is beyond the beautiful gate. <clears throat> this man crossed the beautiful gate. Hey, this man entered the temple for the first time in his life and started jumping up and down and praising God. Baladika Tosi Kaliahada. All the while he stops at the beautiful gate, he cannot cross, he cannot enter the temple as a crippled person. Nobody will carry him into the temple. So, the place he normally stopped was the beautiful gate that was his limitation, that was the, the far he could go. But that day, the limitation was broken. This man with his leg crossed the beautiful gate and entered the temple. Hey, if you remember, I once handled a topic here on dealing with spiritual gates and i said every level in life has a gate you must go through this man had a gate that was stopping him from entering the temple going to the next level of his life that was where he could stop all the while but that day the gate opened unto him badinda so parakatos get here he crossed the beautiful gate and entered the temple mm. I don't know what has been a limitation in your life. Every Jordan that has stopped you at where you are now, your account cannot cross 100,000, cannot cross 10,000. When it's about to cross, something will happen. You will spend almost all and will start all afresh. You can't cross that level. It's like something has put an embargo over your life. That you can never fly an airplane in your life. You will continue to go to Lagos, Abuja, everywhere by a broker bus, and then perhaps on attachment. That yoke shall be broken today. It's like there is an embargo in your life that nobody will cross a particular level in your family. You see, when this person happens to have a problem of 5,000 and runs to another person with a to please lend me 5,000. It will be an It will be like somebody, you know, running, you know, from the lion and then run, running from the lion and then you're meeting the a rattlesnake. What is that that has put a limitation in your life? That you can't have a child or you can't have more than one child. That yoke shall be broken today. You will go beyond the beautiful gate today. Everything that has kept you at the beautiful gate that you cannot go beyond the beautiful gate. In the name of Jesus, I command it to be broken. You have been at a particular level at your workplace for 10 years, 5 years, no promotion. Others will be promoted, they will skip your name. Something is wrong, it's an error. You will cross that beautiful gate today. That limitation that you cannot get that visa. They keep denying you. They keep denying you. Hey, you are crossing that beautiful gate from today. That limitation that you will not get your papers. Each time you go for interview, they will deny you. They will turn you down. That limitation shall be broken today. You will go beyond that beautiful gate today. Hey, that thing that says you cannot be on wheel like other people. That yoke shall be broken today. Hey, that thing that brings disappointment to your life that you cannot go to the altar and say, I do, I do, like other people. That limitation shall be broken today. Hey, I am speaking to you in the name of the Lord. All the while you have stopped at the beautiful gate, but God is moving you beyond their beautiful gate today. Hey, God is beyond, be, moving you beyond economy to business class. Ebubele to first class. Abarado, Sikadeha. 
God is moving you from eating on the ground to eating on the table. God is moving you from going to Bentham Boutique to going to Reed Boutique. God is moving you from going to a restaurant where you say, Madam, remove meat and add more gary to taking you to, I mean, five-star hotel. God is taking you to places you will enter and you collect whatever you want and you now say, please, let me have the bill. And as soon as the bill is brought, you have the capacity to pay. Hey, what is that keeping you at the beautiful gate? Today, you will have an encounter. This man had an encounter with Peter and John. Peter and John are no more. I'm here today representing Peter and John. I have that divine deposit in my life. I have that grace upon my life. The same way Peter and John spoke to this man at the cripple at the gate, cripple man at the gate. I speak into your life today. Everything that is keeping you at the beautiful gate, let it let you go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm, this man went into the temple and started jumping up and down, singing praises unto God. Listen to me. You will sing, oh. You will jump up and down, oh. You will rejoice, oh. You will testify to, to God, oh, concerning that situation you have been all this while. It shall end in testimony. It shall end in the church with a thanksgiving. This man entered the temple and then started singing praises unto the name of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness. To all generation, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. The people recognize him as we pray together now. They say, is this not that man that was crippled at the gate? Uh, uh, what has happened to him? He's jumping up and down with his legs with us now. He is here with us in the temple. Mm. What God will do in your life, people will recognize you. Hmm. They will recognize, they will say, is this not that barren woman? Look at the protruded tummy. Is this not this man I usually see at the bus station? Look at him with a porch car. Is this not this man I meet at the job market? Why is he sitting at the seat of a personal manager? Ebubele. They will see you. Is this not that sick person? Why is he jumping up and down as if he's no longer sick? They will recognize what God has done in your life. Listen to me. The blessing God will give to you will never be hidden. He said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. It will be so much that you won't hide it. You won't be able to hide it. They will see you and they will recognize. And probably those who said bad things about, eat things about you will change what they have said. Some people may have cursed him, idiot, non-entity, never do well, beggar, but the, the language has changed. You can't call him a beggar again. You can't call him a crippled man again. God has changed the story. He will change your story. I am telling you, he will change your story. You will say that I told you. He will change your story. You have told stories in the past crying in the past he will change your story you will now tell your testimony with smiles on your faces 
receive it today. I see you moving from where you are now to where you are supposed to be. I see you joining the committee of people who have made it in life. I see you moving from a place of rejection, sorrow, to a place where people are jumping up and down and rejoicing and giving glory to God. You are moving from where you are now, by fire, by force. I command you, wherever you have been stopped at a particular gate, whatever gate that has stopped you, in the name of Jesus, let that gate release you now. Let it open now. I move you to the next level of your life. Let it be so. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let me hear your loudest amen. Wow, what a mighty God we serve. You want to give your life to Jesus? Please bow your heads in prayers and say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins. Come into my life today and be my Lord and Savior. I'm sorry for my sins. I don't want to continue them again. Give me the power to live for you from today. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray shall be unto you as you have confessed today. And may God give you the power to live for him from today. In Jesus' name. Amen. That sickness is over in your life. That challenge is over in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. There is somebody you are watching me. In 48 hours, you're going to call me or send me a text message that God has turned your situation around. Bible said instantly the man was healed. You, you watch him in 24 hours, you will testify. In one week, you will testify. 72 hours, you will testify. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are in a decisive situation now. Behold the helping hand of God. He's helping you out. It shall be a testimony. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. Amen. The account details are right there on the screen right now. You want to pay your tithe, give an offering or so a seat, please use the account details. My phone number is also on the screen right now, plus 234 You can give me a call and it will be my pleasure to be of help unto you in any way that I can. I'll be with you again tomorrow morning for another wonderful time of morning devotion. I'm going to continue with commanding your morning commanding your have you commanded your morning i just introduced it today i will finish it tomorrow morning so keep a date with me 6 a.m and i will also be with you by 6 p.m tomorrow for another atmosphere of possibilities until i come your way again this is your brother reverend better one reverend be saying god bless you continue to keep safe with jesus bye for you, do sacrifice for you, pray you into the kingdom of God. That is a philosophy from the pit of hell. How you live here on earth will tell you where you will end in eternity.